Hello, America. Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. I'm David Barton, filling in for Glenn tonight. Well, tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day, and many families will be spending time together, eating meals, and enjoying sporting events, and hopefully remembering to stop and thank God for His many blessings. I mean, after all, Thanksgiving, which is one of America's favorite holidays, is one of our many overtly religious holidays that we officially celebrate every year. But how did we get here? That is, how did Thanksgiving become one of our most beloved celebrations? While most Americans know that this tradition goes back to the pilgrims, times of Thanksgiving in America actually occurred long before the pilgrims. For example, a Thanksgiving commemoration occurred 79 years before the pilgrims in 1541 at Palajuro Canyon, Texas, with Coronado and 1,500 of his men. Then in 1565, there was one at St. Augustine, Florida, with French Huguenots, that is, French Protestant colonists. And there was one in 1598 at El Paso, Texas, with Juan de Oñate and his expedition. And in 1607, there was a Thanksgiving celebration after settlers landed at Cape Henry, Virginia. And there was another one in 1619 at Berkeley Plantation, Virginia. And all of these Thanksgivings happened long before the pilgrims ever arrived. But it's still from their Thanksgiving celebration of 1621 that we observe and derive the current tradition of Thanksgiving Day. Now, the pilgrims, if you remember, had set sail for America back in September of 1620. And for two months, they braved crossing a storm-tossed sea. After disembarking at Plymouth Rock, they had a prayer service and began hastily building shelters, but unprepared for harsh New England winter, half of them died. Now, emerging from that grueling winter, the pilgrims were surprised when an Indian named Samoset approached them and greeted them in their own language, explaining to them that he had learned English from fishermen and traders. A week later, Samoset returned with a friend named Squanto, who lived with the pilgrims and accepted their Christian faith. Squanto taught the pilgrims much about how to live in the new world, and he and Samoset helped forge a lasting peace treaty between the pilgrims and the Wampanoag Indians. Now, Pilgrim Governor William Bradford described Squanto as, quote, a special instrument sent of God for our good, and he never left us till he died. The pilgrims, persevering in prayer and assisted by helpful Indians, reaped a bountiful harvest that summer. So, in December of 1621, they declared a three-day feast to thank God and celebrate with their Indian friends. And this is America's first Thanksgiving celebration, not just a Thanksgiving service as the earlier ones had been. No, this was a genuine Thanksgiving festival, and it involved friends and family, athletic events, it involved meals and feasting, and it involved times of prayer and religious worship. This led to an annual Thanksgiving tradition in the New England colonies but days of Thanksgiving really didn't start spreading southward into the other colonies until the American Revolution. And at that time, Congress issued eight separate national Thanksgiving proclamations. Now, America's first federal Thanksgiving occurred in 1789 after the end of the Revolution and the adoption of the Constitution. The discussion of notable founding fathers about why they did this first federal Thanksgiving is actually found in this book. This is the records of Congress covering 1789, and it tells us here in this book, it says, quote, Elias Boudinot said he could not think of letting the season pass without offering an opportunity to all citizens of the United States of joining with one voice and returning to Almighty God their sincere thanks for the many blessings he had poured down upon them. Also, we're told that Roger Sherman, it says, Roger Sherman justified the practice of thanksgiving as warranted by a number of precedents in the Holy Writ, that is the Scriptures. This example he thought worthy of Christian imitation on the present occasion. So Congress, therefore, requested President Washington to call for a day of national thanksgiving, which he gladly did. He issued this original thanksgiving proclamation, 1789. This is America's very first federal thanksgiving. Now, why did President Washington do this? Why did he call for a federal Thanksgiving? Well, he explained right here in this proclamation. He said, It is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. Federal Thanksgiving proclamations occurred sporadically after this one, with most official Thanksgiving observances occurring at the state level rather than the federal level. Much of the credit for the adoption of our annual federal Thanksgiving holiday may be attributed to Sarah Hale, a mother of five and the editor of Godey's Ladies Magazine. It was a popular ladies magazine that contained poetry and artwork and articles by America's leading authors. She actively promoted the idea of a national Thanksgiving Day. And she explained in an editorial, she said, 
Thanksgiving Day is the national pledge of Christian faith in God, acknowledging Him as the dispenser of blessings. This festival should be joyfully and universally observed throughout our whole country as inseparable from American life. For nearly three decades, she lobbied and wrote president after president, including President Abraham Lincoln, asking him to proclaim a federal Thanksgiving. Now, Lincoln set that precedent. He responded in 1863 with the proclamation. Here is his proclamation printed in the New York Times. He set it up for the last Thursday of November. Sound kind of familiar? He reminded Americans in this proclamation, he said, the year that is drawing toward its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and helpful skies. And to these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we're prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added. So no human counsel has devised any, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God. Over the next 75 years, subsequent presidents followed Lincoln's president, and over the course of time, annual Thanksgiving celebrations, they varied widely, and they even occurred in different months over those 75 years. But then in 1933, with this Thanksgiving proclamation by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, we began regularly celebrating Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of each November. And then in 1941, Congress permanently established that day as the national Thanksgiving holiday. By the way, you can see all of these original historic Thanksgiving proclamations and lots of others at wallbuilders.com.